International Organization for Migration is one of several UN agencies and partners working in the area, providing facilitation to the people affected by the floods. According to their estimates, almost 9 million people have been displaced. The Director General of the organization, Mr. William Lacey Swing, is in Pakistan to assess the situation for himself. In an exclusive interview, he reflected on his visit and what he hoped to achieve. I think that's going to make a huge difference because from what we were here, from, the, from my understanding and your, your colleague here had gave us a fantastic uh, introduction to the, to the situation on the ground and just talking to people, they just feel so helpless yeah. right now and almost stunned. I mean, people who were extremely, um, they, they, were, they were average, you know, they weren't as poor as one would expect them to be. The, they have a better standard of living. They just have lost everything and when I ask them what they miss most, they say, the women are saying they miss their homes because they don't really get to go out much yeah. and they just miss that, that, that four walls of their house that they had. It's the homes and of course in addition to that this is a rural community they miss their livelihoods. Yeah. They wiped out the granary, mm -hmm. wiped out the whole season, mm -hmm. uh, the planting season mm -hmm. for them and so having now to get back on their feet, getting, uh, getting some of the soil mm -hmm. back, getting seeds, mm -hmm. all that it takes to make a living. So, so what is your purpose of your visit? What is it exactly that you're hoping to, to, right. to go back with? Look, I, my objectives were very simple, mm -hmm. two. One, I came essentially to express condolences mm -hmm. to the people and the government of your country mm -hmm. and to show solidarity uh, with them, mm -hmm. even though we work in a very modest way. Mm -hmm. We're a small part of a larger chain. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing. And then also to express appreciation uh, to those on the ground, our colleagues here and others, our many partners here. We're, all, we're one of maybe probably a hundred partners, uh, including the whole UN system, the NGOs, uh, particularly a lot of local NGOs who are doing a great job. And then secondly, I came to have a first-hand, as, as you are having, a first-hand appreciation of the kind of suffering that's going on and to go back to our headquarters with a much better idea mm -hmm. of what kind of support is needed mm -hmm. here and to by my own means back in uh, headquarters to to try to uh, reinforce the appeal that's been made mm -hmm. as you know we've gotten now about 60 percent of the secretary general's mm -hmm. appeal uh, the total amount he wanted uh, and i think that that's the least I can do, yeah. and I'll come back at a later time to see again, but I thought it's better to come right now. Has the magnitude of the situation struck you? Because at the, when, when Haiti happened, yeah. people were able to access very quickly because it was a much smaller area. We're looking at almost yeah. 20 million people. Um, and as one of the briefings that we got from yeah. the United Nations told us, this is the largest migration yeah. and displacement and that's when yeah. your organization yeah. comes in. So are we prepared for what's going to happen next? Well, I, I, I would certainly uh, agree with you that the magnitude of the destruction and the damage uh, is absolutely staggering. I think the Secretary General's description of it when he came here is, is I think, uh, probably the, most, uh, the best one, which is a slow-moving tsunami because it's not over yet. Now you have the problems in the mm -hmm. south. Mm -hmm. We understood that uh, a million or more people have been displaced within the last uh, 48 hours mm -hmm. in, in the southern provinces mm -hmm. there. So uh, while we're, as one works to fill the gap, the gap actually tends to grow larger. Mm -hmm. So I think the message that we all ought to take away from this is that, that uh, for uh, disasters such as mm -hmm. this, you have to remain committed to stay the course mm. because this is not a short-term crisis. Right. Uh, we have, uh, everyone is now focused on the life-saving uh, aspect, but you're with, as you can see from the distribution today, you're moving into a kind of a recovery mm -hmm. period in which people can go back to reclaim their homes, rebuild mm -hmm. their homes. And I, I, uh, I think in these disasters you develop uh, enormous admiration mm -hmm. for people's uh, courage and resilience in the midst of uh, having lost basically mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's an opportunity for us to, uh, to stand by uh, the Pakistan people. And it also gives us as Pakistani an opportunity to thank the organizations like the United Nations for coming in and stepping in. Because as we've been hearing every day, um, the, the government is just distraught. They have no idea which direction to go in. And
having organization that you like yours who sit and you know plan and I especially IOM who is has been out in the field and we can we've seen that in in taking place in principle right here um, you had a chance to meet with our president yesterday yes what came out of those discussions well we had it was an honor for me to, to have this chance to meet with the president and I appreciate the time he was able to give me I wanted to reinforce the partnership that we've had here for about 30 years it'll be 30 years uh, next year mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to reassure him that we appreciate the efforts the government has been making and that the way in which they've supported us so that we could do what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to reaffirm our commitment to, to continue to work in Pakistan for many years to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, although we are not uh, uh, all that large, we, within our own means, want to continue to do everything we can to see this crisis through. And uh, I want to thank the, uh, the government uh, and uh, all of its international partners for the effort that's being made. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back uh, committed to try to get greater support for you. Well, we actually have a message for you from the, uh, the people who are at the camp. Um, they're very grateful because a lot of them have been on the, um, have been just waiting under the sky and they're extremely grateful to IOM for the, for the facilitation but they request that if somebody could send doctors to them that would be very necessary because they're really finding that that's the biggest yeah. challenge but yeah. they're extremely grateful. Right, it's on the health program. Yeah, that's very important. Yes. No, I think uh, the, I guess the parting word I would have is that if you take the, as I mentioned, the, the, the characterization, the courage and the resilience of the mm -hmm. people and the great effort that the, uh, the government is making mm -hmm. uh, with, its, uh, with its international mm -hmm. partners, uh, we, we should not let, the, we should not, the problem is it's so overwhelming mm -hmm. that there's a tendency to say to throw up one's hands and say we can do nothing. No, mm -hmm. it's not. We should, take, we should be fortified by the efforts that have been mm -hmm. made, the number of lives that have been saved through the efforts of the mm -hmm. government. And, the, and their partners to save life, and, and that should embolden us to, to, do, to go forward, mm -hmm. uh, encouraged and to know that uh, with determination, uh, this, can be, uh, this can be resolved. Well, they have a very daunting task ahead of them, and I think with organizations like IOM stepping up to the plate gives them a bit of a sh shot in the arm that they really, really need right now. Thank well, you very we're, much. We're honored to be, to be part of this. And, Wish we could do more and we'll try to do more. Thank you very Thank much. You so Thank much. you so much. Too proud to ask for help. The residents of Pir Sabik Tent Village reflect the situation of over 17 million people affected by the floods. The area is still quite close to a city and accessible. One can only imagine the situation in the remotest village where roads are gone and bridges swept away. Medical assistance is absolutely crucial to ensure that epidemics are checked or the floods would do a lot more than merely destroy homes.